All right, David Harry here, and in this video, I'm going to convert the ultra wide field of view of a Sony ZV1 into a super ultra wide field of view, just like you get on a GoPro. <laughs> As if. Right, what it is in this video, I'm just going to be putting an, an adapter on my ZV1, which is this one, which is the Ulanzi WL1. Now, just to be clear here, I don't expect this to turn this into a GoPro killer as far as field of view is concerned. I'm just looking for a little bit extra width on my field of view so I can get a bit closer to stuff or closer than what I can get to with this and then comfortably get stuff into the frame and things like that. Because what it is, although this is my second one and you would have thought I'd have learnt my lesson, apparently I hadn't. So what's happened after I bought this one, I'm doing some of them rostrum shots that I do where I film stuff on the table and that. And it is still not wide enough. It is still too narrow. So what I need is just a little bit of extra width on that field of view. So let's see if this can do it. So what I'm going to do in this video is apply this onto there because you have to kind of stick a piece onto the front and all this. It's a little, could be seen as being a bit messy, I suppose. So hopefully if there's any mistakes that have been made doing this, Hopefully I make the mistakes and then other people can learn from them. Hopefully I don't make any mistakes though. So what I'm going to do in this video, throw this all together. Then I'll do one or two shots afterwards here with the camera on the table and stuff. And I'll do with and without the adapter on. Also as well, because this is also doubling up as a macro adapter as well. I'll try one or two quick macro shots as well to what we can get out of that. And then at a later date, I will do some stuff outdoors with the ZV-1 and the WL-1 on it. And basically basically do vloggy stuff and let's see if doing outdoor vloggy stuff you know your day-to-day -day walkabout vloggy thing whether this can help this and turn it into something a bit closer to a GoPro okay before I get into this one thing that's worth mentioning as we can see here I've got two packages now what it is I assume that everything would all come in the one box and it didn't I don't know whether this is normal or whether or not the WL1 in fact doesn't come with the adapter ring unless you specifically order it that way this might be something that actually just comes on its own as a 52 mil adapter because that's all it is it's just a 52 millimeter wide angle adapter now what it is this bit here this is the bit as we will see that sticks onto the barrel over the lens and then this becomes like a 52 mil receptor on the front of the camera for this to screw onto so the only reason why i'm pointing this out and laboring the point on it is because when you order these things just make sure that it definitely does come with this ring because if it doesn't you're not screwing that onto the front of any camera unless the camera already has a 52 mil thread system on the front of it now the links that I'm going to provide for this are exactly as I've bought it with the two bits here but if you start looking around the internet and looking elsewhere for these things just make sure that this ring thing definitely comes with the wide angle adapter okay so first thing I'm going to do then is get into the adapter so let me just open up the box now there's a little thing in here which is just going to be a manual and stuff I'm not even going to bother with this because I'm going to be showing you exactly what's going on but it comes with that now the box itself is really nice it's very well padded and I would imagine you can probably use this box for transporting it and stuff like that if it's going to go into a kit bag it's got very nice heavy foam in there so let me just get the box out the way it's also a bit padded on the bottom there there. so that's the box and stuff out the way with now inside here what we've got is a cleaning cloth there so just a bog standard little free cleaning cloth but also we get two of these little rings as well now let me see if I can get closer to the camera here let's get some focus so what it is these are like double-sided adhesive things and you literally kind of peel it off let me see if i can just peel a bit there so as we can see there's the ring element there that we end up using for sticking down the adapter onto the front of the camera so that's two there but we already get one and a spare with the actual ring and i'll show that in a second so get that out the way now as far as the adapter is concerned or the wide angle adapter here it is fairly weighty it's got like you know it's got a lot of glass in it as well um, which is great in one way but you know you may have concerns with this because it is going to be a bit of extra weight hanging off the front of your zv1 so as to how much it's going to play havoc with the motors i don't know i'll get into this a bit later hopefully once i've kind of stuck it on and got a bit more of a feel for it anyways the back of it here 
it's got a nice little screw on here to you know to protect it so it'll come it all comes well protected and everything so little plate on the back to screw on to protect the back element there and then just comes with a nice little lens cap on there you go like that now that there is the wide angle element of the whole thing and hopefully i can get a bit closer here let's see all done so as you can see there it's got a thread on the back now that's a 52 mil thread there so that will actually screw onto anything that's 52 mil and heads up here i'm going to show some stuff to do with this and my gopros seriously i've already been messing and fooling with it do some really cool stuff with it <laughs> anyway so in that form there that is the wide angle version now it's in two halves so there's a front element and a back element now if we just leave it down to hold on get there in the end <laughs> if we just leave it down to the back element that then turns into a macro lens for you or a macro lens adapter so you get two functions macro lens and then you bang this on and then you're into like your full extra wide angle adapter so what i'm gonna do let me just put this back together now we've seen all the inside of the of the actual lens itself. I'm just gonna show you the stuff that comes inside the other package. So here's what comes in the other package. And as we can see, that is another one of those double-sided sticky ring things there. So we have three altogether spare because on the back of there, there's already one applied. So we just peel that off and then stick that over onto the front of the lens. Now, as we can hopefully see here, if I can get the right angle on it, hopefully, but a bit of a bit of a right angle and a bit of focus somewhere, just on the inside of this ring, that's actually a 52 mil thread system. So what we're doing basically, we're slapping this onto the front of the camera and then giving the camera a 52 mil thread system. In fact, if you give us a second, if I just take the back off the adapter or the wide angle adapter there, as we'll see, it'll screw straight onto this. Oops, I don't want to drop that. <laughs> right, so there we go. So we screw straight on like that, as you can see. Anyway, so what I'm going to do now is the real difficult fun bit. So give us a second. Right, so there's my ZV-1. Now what I need to do is unpeel the sticky elements off there and then stick it over the front of the barrel like that. But there's no guide or anything here, so you just have to try your best to center it on. Now, I think what might be better is if we power the camera on and then we extend the barrel out like that. So we're extending the lens out and then we're gonna kind of try and fit that on and center it as best as possible. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna go in a bit closer. I might lose a bit of light to go in closer because this camera's gonna have to stop down to do it. But nonetheless, I'm gonna have to stay dead quiet and shut that big hole on the front of me face and try and concentrate on what I'm doing here. So I will go quiet as I'm doing it because I don't want to mess it up. Although I've got three more of these stickers to put it on with, I'd rather get it right on the first go or at least get it centered as best as possible. Okay, so I've just left after a few minutes there. Whether that's necessary, I don't think so. Now I've got to be honest, I think I've put it on quite straight there. So I think it's kind of centered itself fairly well there. And as we can see, when it's all closed over and stuff, it does not look out of place. So what I'm gonna say here right now, this thing alone is probably worth putting on your ZV-1, and I'll show you why in a minute. But right now, let's see what happens when we throw this on it. And that's the thing that I need to know because this is actually quite heavy. Now, like I'd said before, I'm not entirely sure how much wear and tear this is gonna put on that motor. And the one thing that I would probably imagine you'd really have to do is only put it on after you've extended and like switched the camera on. And just be careful that the camera isn't doing too much kind of zooming and stuff or anything like that with this on the front. Although that said, you shouldn't really be doing anything other than keeping the camera fully wide when you've got this on anyway, because the whole point of putting one of these on is to get your, you know, your widest field of view possible anyway. So you shouldn't be zooming and moving the barrel around. Now, like that there, I'm just going to try something, and I'm not suggesting people do this, but I'm going to try it anyway. I'm going to hold the camera by that lens system or by that, that adapter. So there we go. 
Now I'm shaking that about, yeah, I'm shaking that about quite a bit. Yeah, I mean, I'm being quite forceful with that, to be honest. So, not that anyone would hold that system from the front like I just did, but that's just to show you that it is stuck on really well. Now, obviously, although it is stuck on, it will be designed to come back off. I'd imagine you might have to use some kind of like white spirit or something or anything, something similar like to that to clean off any residual gunk after you peel it off. But that will definitely come off because it's only stuck on with a double-sided tape thing. But as you can see there, it is on quite solid so i don't have a problem with that at all and not that you will hold it from the lens anyway now what i'm going to do just to get myself into a pattern and to get myself used to doing this let me take it off first so i'm going to take it off and then i'm going to switch the camera on let me extend the lens first beforehand then let me put it back on like that now whilst it's extended like that i'm definitely not going to hold it from the front <laughs> or you know from that you know wide angle adapter but do you know what that you know just looking at it and stuff let me take the lens cap off there see looking at it there and, and just having it in my hands i've got to say right now it doesn't feel out of place it's weird I thought this would look like some kind of weird monster, you know, after I put it on, but no, that actually feels like it should be there. It's amazing. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now, I'm just gonna whip this off and show you a couple of other things before I switch over and do some testing of this lens. Okay, so check this out then. Because we've now got ourselves a 52 mil thread system on the front of the camera, it means we can put other stuff on and not just this wide angle adapter. So as a, for instance, there's a UV filter, let me just throw that on. Now, here's the cool thing with this, because that UV filter and also the adapter ring are extremely light, there's no way that that's gonna upset anything to do with the camera. So, if I then start switching it off and on with just say the UV on and stuff, that's gonna be fine. It'll handle that all day long. I mean, I don't know, maybe it's all powerful enough and the motor's strong enough to work with that wide angle adapter I'm not going to try it in 10 feet with that one. But as we can see right there, that works. In fact, if you give us a second, and look, there's a lens cap, a 52mm lens cap, and I'm going to put that on there as well. So look at that. So straight away now I've got a lens cap on, I've got a UV filter on, and all that weight combined there is not going to upset anything with that ZV-1. It's just not going to struggle with that type of stuff at all. So you could be going out with some stuff on the front of there. And then on top of that, let me just take the UV off a sec. I mean, you can be putting anything on here. This is just an example, but here's a bit small variable ND. I mean, this one's not amazing or anything. But once again, just to show you, you can just pop all kinds of stuff onto the front now. So that could be static NDs or, you know, any kind of glass on the front you know, for filtering and stuff and what have you. Could put polarizers on, all kinds of stuff. So, like I say, that there is actually really cool just for putting other things on as well. So now what I'm gonna do is pop it around and let's start testing the actual wide-angle adapter. Okay, so for the first test shot then, this is without the wide-angle adapter. And hopefully, as we should be able to see from the other camera over there, I'm just over a full arm's length or just on a full arm's length away from the end of the lens there. So you could probably see this distance here as maybe a vlogging distance anyway, do you know what I mean? So if you want to get an idea of what the field of view is like at full arm's length, this is it. Now, right now I'm in 4K, but I don't have any stabilization on. Obviously, I don't need stabilization on because it is locked off on a little desk tripod here. And also, with the stabilizer being off, it's going to give us a little bit more field of view back. Although, being in 4K, it's going to give us slightly less field of view than what we would get if we were in 1080. Anyways, what I'm going to do now is throw the wide angle adapter on. Okay, so over onto the wide angle adapter now. Now, I'm just having a quick look on the monitor there. It does look like it's really decent, the actual addition that we've got. And as we can see from the other camera over there, I'm still same distance away, so just on over a full arm's length away from where the lens is laying in front of me. Yeah, just another quick look there. That really is a lot of difference that I can see there immediately. So I've got to say right now, I think that this is really good. 
I can't still yet tell what the picture quality is like. That's only something that I'm gonna be able to tell after looking at it in post. But right now, you're gonna be able to see what that difference is, is straight away. So does it look okay? Has the picture degraded or anything like that? Now, as I'm just looking at this, I'm gonna get come to the edge, edge of the screen here. I don't see too much kind of bending or warping going on there. There's a table in here, so I can't get right over the other side. But I think for the best part here, this looks like there's no kind of bend and it doesn't look like the geometry is going mad or nothing that's how it looks on the little kind of you know lcd on the zv1 you'll be able to tell the difference here properly anyway what i'm going to do now is do a little count thing where i go between the two shots and let's go for straight cuts and direct comparisons one two three four five six seven eight Okay, so that counting and cutting between the two takes should have given us a really big obvious difference there. And hopefully you'll agree with me because I can only see on the little tiny screen on the ZV-1 right now, but hopefully you'll agree with me. It is quite substantial, the difference. However, I still can't tell what the quality is like, but right now you'll have been able to have seen what the quality is like with and without the adapter on. So not just how well it's doing at giving us extra field of view, but is it gonna degrade the picture any further than what it already is and stuff? And right now, I can't say that I can see it doing that. So yeah, that's all good. Anyways, what I'm gonna do now, I'm just gonna do one last test where I'm just gonna film some stuff on the table with the ZV-1 as is and see how close I can get to stuff for focus. Just got some boxes and whatnot, the stuff that I had on the table before basically. And then what I'll do, I'll just put the, uh, the macro section of the adapter on and let's see how close we can get to that stuff. Okay, so that macro stuff there may not have been mega exciting and it might only have a limited use because obviously you've got to get quite close and obviously there's a lot of kind of like geometry issues and stuff. But as a little bonus, maybe that's going to help for some kind of shooting that you're doing and stuff. Anyways, I think this video's probably dragged on for a bit longer than what it may needed to have done. It's just that, to be honest, I've been like quite excited as I've been doing the video. Don't know if you can tell these things when I'm doing this stuff, but sometimes I just can't shut me trap once I get going. And I've got to say, from what I've seen on the actual display on the ZV-1, I think this is going to work for me really well. 
of course i still haven't looked at the stuff in the timeline yet to see exactly if there's like you know much of a drop in quality and all that kind of stuff but as long as there isn't or if there's only like a minor hit in quality i think i'll be using that quite a bit for doing vloggy type stuff or just to get closer in on people when i want to kind of pick them up better with say a mic that's like say sat on top of the camera and stuff because that's the other thing you have to remember you may not be using one of these adapters just for vlogging you could be recording someone talking and obviously the closer you get the better that's going to be for any microphone that's like popped onto the camera itself or even its internal microphones and stuff like that so there's a whole bunch of reasons why you might want to use a wide angle adapter which has got nothing to do with vlogging anyways i'm going to shut me big yapper here and scoot off because i've got a whole bunch of things i want to try out with this now so keep an eye on my channel because there will be stuff that i'll be doing specifically with the zv1 and this actual adapter but also i'm going to be trying this adapter with a gopro and a couple of other things as well so you can keep an eye on all of my zv1 stuff by going to www.sonyzv1.com that will take you to my playlist with all my zv1 stuff on and as far as the gopro stuff is concerned as well if you go to www.gopro9.com that'll take you to all my gopro videos and if you found this video insightful help Helpful or maybe even entertaining in some way please consider giving it a big thumbs up also maybe subscribe to my channel get all over that bell notification icon thing and there will also be links in the description to all the stuff that i've been using in this video so lenses cameras all kinds of junk and stuff like that anywho the last thing that remains for me to say right now is i'm david harry thank you very much for watching this video take care and goodbye now <laughs>